Sales continue to improve as mortgages slow. Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This show, our November show, is about October activity at the Registry of Deeds. I'll be taking you through some charts that explain what's going on with, with sales of property, mortgages, foreclosure deeds, and foreclosure notices. In my second segment of the show, I have a guest, uh, Rachel Dorr, of the Sun Initiative of uh, Boston Community Capital, that'll just be discussing some very unique ways to forestall foreclosures. And so let's go to the numbers. Uh, you will see coming across the sc screen a chart of sales of property. Uh, on this graph, you can see that there were 817 uh, sales of property in October compared to the 694 sales in September. Uh, we're 24% higher than October uh, last year in 2012. In year to date, uh, our sales are up 7%. That certainly shows that the marketplace is improving. Mortgages are a different story. When the mortgage rates went up several months ago, the number of refinances in the mortgage market just stopped. So we recorded 1,769 mortgages, as you can see on the chart, in October 2013. It was greater than the 1,540 mortgages in September 2013. However, it was down 34% from the 2,681 mortgages in October of 2012. And year to date, our mortgages are down 9%. We always report on the number of foreclosure deeds that have occurred. And foreclosure deed is when a lender has taken back a property from the owner. It's gone through a very uh, long process. There were 58 foreclosure deeds recorded in October 2013 which jumped up from the 32 recorded in September of 2013, and up 23% from the 47 foreclosure deeds in October 2012. You can see on the chart uh, the higher number um, um, over the past year, uh, it, but it is down 55% year to date, which is a positive trend in the foreclosure uh, issue. We also uh, show a chart of foreclosure notices. A foreclosure notice is the document that's recorded at the registry when someone is in trouble, when they haven't been making payments, when they're uh, pending a foreclosure deed. Uh, it's still an opportunity to get help. We work with the Plymouth Redevelopment Authority and Neighborhood Housing of the South Shore to try to get those individuals' uh, mortgages modified and have had some great success. We hosted a foreclosure um, conference at the registry last month with Neighborhood Housing of the South Shore, and uh, numerous people came in and got involved in giving them information to try to get the lenders to modify their loan. Uh, you'll also see a chart coming across the screen of the number of foreclosure notices and foreclosure deeds by community uh, in Plymouth. Uh, which I know this show sh uh, gets to. There were 10 properties taken back by lenders in the month of October and 13 properties that were in the foreclosure notice stage. Obviously, Duxbury, a community that's a little uh, stronger financially, there was only one foreclosure deed and no orders and notice. Uh, the town of Pembroke had one foreclosure deed in two parties that received notices. In Kingston, there were no foreclosure deeds and one foreclosure notice. Uh, there were a lot of things that happened at the registry. I just want to let people know that we have three offices. Our main office is in Plymouth at 50 Obery Street. We have a satellite office in Rockland on Hingham Street in the AAA Plaza, and a satellite office in Brockton on West Elm Street, the former Brockton District Court. I advise people to take uh, their filings very seriously. If you've paid off a, a discharge of your mortgage, you, you really want to make sure that discharge was recorded. Those are the kind of things that we do to help you maintain your ownership in your property. We'll be coming back with a special guest, Rachel Dorr from the Sun Initiative of Boston Community Capital. They'll be talking about a unique way to uh, help yourself if you're in the foreclosure process. Thank you. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen. 
But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Call this free government program for the option that's right for you. Welcome back to the Registry Report. Again, my name is John Buckley. I'm the Registry of Deeds at Plymouth County. And in this segment of our show, we always try to do something educational in nature. And I have a special guest today, Rachel Dorr. Hey, Rachel, how are you? John, I'm fine, thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, Rachel Dorr is uh, of the Sun Initiative from Boston Community Capital Group. It's a organization that helps keep people in their home either prior or post foreclosure. So uh, welcome again to the show. Do you want to tell us a little bit of background about how uh, Boston Community Capital got into this business? Uh, yes, John. The program, in short, is to ha assist people who are facing foreclosure uh, to repurchase their homes with a mortgage that they can afford. And we got into this because the bubble uh, happened, uh, prices went up, people got good-sized mortgages going, and then with the economic downturn, a lot of those mortgages were not sustainable, uh, and people had hardships. Mm -hmm. uh, they lost their jobs. Uh, some uh, people also have had the classic hardships that give people problems with their mortgages in any economy. They, someone was sick, uh, or a divorce happened, and our program uh, was inspired by looking at communities where suddenly the foreclosure rates were really rocketing and we wanted to see if we could do something to help. Yeah, I've, I've been in the registered seat uh, during that time period, during the, the bubble when everything when it was refinancing and everything was great in 2003 and 2004 and then 2008, uh, everything just hit in uh, a, a very strong downturn. The economy was not so great. Uh, people at the original uh, stage were getting these really bad mortgages that were resetting and uh, no document, no um, income necessary loans. It was it was really um, a, a real tragedy for a lot of people. And, and many people, I think, went into it without recognizing the risks that were built into their mortgages. You mentioned the, the adjustable rates that suddenly would pop up. And if that happened at the same time that your overtime had disappeared, mm. uh, th then you could be in a, in a very tough situation. So you know that we've, we've worked at the registry with, uh, you know, South Shore Housing, Plymouth Redevelopment Authority, and, uh, you know, the Brian Moriarty's group out of, out of Brockton, uh, Neighborhood Housing of the South Shore, trying to get information to them to help people modify their loans. But your program's a little bit different. That's right. It, it, <clears throat> it, it really dovetails with those kinds of efforts. Right. Uh, it, it, it's very helpful for, for people at any stage in the process as soon as they know that they're going to be behind on their mortgages uh, or at risk to get in touch with the housing counseling organizations like uh, Neighborhood Housing of the South Shore uh, and get information. Um, and modifications are something that, that the lenders do, but they do it based on a, on a calculation about whether it's better for them to modify than to foreclose as a financial matter. Uh, if they make that decision uh, that they are going to go forward uh, to, to foreclose, then uh, there are fewer options for homeowners. Mm -hmm. And they're looking then at either a, a short sale where the lender uh, takes less than all that's owed and allows a sale, uh, or they're looking uh, at a foreclosure. So our program it comes in at that point. Um, and we work uh, with homeowners initially to determine that they, whether they have stable income. Three, three important requirements are you have to be a Massachusetts resident, uh, having difficulty with your mortgage and uh, that you have stable income that's sufficient to support a mortgage at the current market value. So once we've ascertained that to be true, we go ahead and contact the lender uh, and try and work with the homeowner and the lender to, to agree on a price that the lender uh, will part with the property at. And they're, they're going to take a, a lesser amount than was owed in most cases. So we just try and see if we can make that happen in a way that allows the homeowner to retain ownership of the home uh, with an affordable mortgage. So the, in the Sun Initiative is a division of Boston Community Capital. Uh, could you explain Boston yeah. uh, Community Capital's various projects? Yes, Boston Community Capital has been uh, in, a nonprofit <laughs> lender uh, providing capital to communities where low-income people live and work for a variety of purposes. A lot of affordable housing financing, uh, financing for community health facilities, 
for charter schools, uh, for uh, pro projects that will preserve jobs uh, and uh, the and lately a lot of energy initiatives as well. So this is this particular program is is just one of of many things that they've been doing for the over the past thirty years. And we started this program in late two thousand nine. And I know that you initially was were doing a lot of work in Boston, and that uh, mayor. Menino was was very uh, instrumental in getting your program in place. Yes, uh, he's, he endorsed the program early on, and we we did start in Boston because you got to start someplace. But right. uh, we've, the program expanded uh, to all of, serve all of Massachusetts uh, at the end of 2011, and uh, since that time we have uh, been able to provide mortgages to over 300. Uh, Massachusetts homeowners, and that has uh, meant that over 450 households, uh, because of the two and three family buildings that uh, right. that are included in that, have not are, uh, not had to move. Because often for the foreclosure, unfortunately, the tenants get asked to move as well. So that's uh, we think that's that's pretty significant. It certainly was meaningful to the to the uh, 300 homeowners. So I think it would be helpful to explain that this is not government funding that runs this program. Do you want to talk about how initially the program got started and how it's fun being funded now? Yes, that's true. That there are a lot of the, a lot of the mortgage and uh, alternative programs for people are government funded or or regulated. This is a program that uh, Boston Community Capital has to go out and raise its own money, and that's what we did for this. Wall Street that we talked to and they offered us money at 11%, but we didn't think that was going to be a good deal for anybody. So we went instead to a lot of uh, high net worth individuals and a few foundations who were very interested in the idea of trying to make a difference uh, and to see if this program could work. Mm -hmm. And they lent us uh, capital um, and, uh, and in turn, uh, they were also interested in, in the result. Um, now. What's the big exciting news for us this spring was that East Boston Savings Bank looked at our portfolio very closely, looked at the lending we'd done and said, this is good, this works, and they lent us an additional 35 million. We started with 50 million, uh, they lent us an additional 35 million. At this point, I think we've, uh, we're, we're approaching 65 million in mortgages that we've done. So that's, uh, it, it takes, takes capital uh, to make mortgages. Yeah, I, and I think a couple times in our conversation, I'm gonna ask you to share your contact number, which I know PACTV will put up on the screen, but you wanna give yeah, it out anyways? Yes, thank you, John. It, <clears throat> it, it, it doesn't cost anything to apply, and that's, the, that's a very important piece to know. Uh, it just takes a phone call to get the process started. Uh, 617-933-5880 uh, will connect you to uh, our, one of our very engaged staff members who will get basic information and set up an appointment with a mortgage loan originator. So I know you started in Boston, you worked in other cities. In Plymouth County, you started in Brockton, but I know a year ago, you put on a program at the Plymouth Chamber of Commerce. Yes, that, that was a terrific program in which you also yeah. uh, came, and thank you uh, for coming to speak uh, to the folks who came to that, that meeting. Uh, we've done a number of mortgages outside of Brockton, uh, Kingston, Carver, uh, Plymouth, and we are really interested in hearing from, from more people because although the crisis is, is being pronounced as over, uh, I think you have some interesting numbers about uh, how the, the uh, you're still seeing uh, right. foreclosure filings and foreclosure deeds. Yeah, we actually saw a jump in October's numbers over September numbers, and a lot of people thought it would still be a straight uh, downturn, but mm -hmm. we'll see what happens at the end of November. Yeah, and and we, we <clears throat> are going to keep on doing this as long as there's anybody who right. needs it. We're right. not we're not really numbers driven. We're we're interested in in uh, stabilizing neighborhoods um, and communities, not, not in how many of these we can do. Yeah, foreclosures have, have been a, a real uh, troubling issue all across Plymouth County. And while mon many communities have had more foreclosures than others, one individual's family situation in a neighborhood can be so upturned by that issue. Uh, the neighborhood itself becomes destabilized and uh, the entire community feels the effect of a foreclosure, never mind multiple foreclosures in a community. That's, that's right, and that's exactly what this program was intended to so address. I, I think yeah, your um, operation gives a, a great um, alternative way of, of dealing with it, and uh, it certainly people ought to get involved as early as possible. I always try to stress that. 
anybody uh, you know that's in trouble, you know, tell them to reach out and not to wait. A lot of people are embarrassed by this situation, but the faster they get on it, the better they are. And, the, and, and it's really <clears throat> not their fault. Uh, but uh, we've worked with people from uh, the time when they were realizing they couldn't pay to the, right to the point where the sheriff is coming next week, right. post foreclosure. And, <clears throat> and the, the key for every in individual is uh, to, to call us. Uh, we'll walk them through what information we need. Uh, and uh, we'll get them a decision as quickly as possible about whether our program will be able to, to be of assistance to them uh, and uh, get, try and get them uh, launched in, in the right direction. Uh, and we, we also have a, a terrific set of relationships with housing counselors across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So give the, our viewers a, an example of a situation that worked in this program. I, I know we've talked about various uh, things in the past, but I want you to give a specific example of someone and how they get themselves in trouble and how you get them out of trouble. Well, here's a, here's a uh, <clears throat> Plymouth County example from Marshfield. Uh, uh, a young couple um, uh, uh, who'd been working uh, and both lost their jobs. One actually in the mortgage industry, uh, and, and that was an area where a lot of folks were laid off. Sure. Uh, and uh, the other in, in a sales position. Uh, and uh, so they worked at every possible job they could, but were not able to, to keep up with the mortgage that they had. Uh, their property went into foreclosure, uh, and uh, they applied for the program. Uh, we, at this point, they had uh, got back to work at jobs that were more similar to what they were doing, not necessarily as much as, but more similar. Um, and their, uh, their property had been uh, worth much more when they purchased it in approximately 2006. Uh, it had been worth, uh, it was worth uh, 280000 when they purchased it. Uh, at, at the time that uh, they came to us, the, the property was worth about $150,000. Now we negotiate with the lender to get it at distressed market, that is what the lender would get if they took it to foreclosure. Uh, because we need to create a loan loss reserve um, within that, but sold it back to them at the market value, um, and they are happily on their way again. They're about probably a year into that mortgage now, uh, and have had no difficulty paying it. The key is a right size mortgage. Yeah, so the situation you work with are not the early stages of foreclosure that we saw, people that basically over purchased that didn't have the income to buy it to begin with, the people that have had problems along the way, like um, loss of income. And I know you gave me an example um, once before of someone that had a medical issue with a child. Do you mm -hmm. want to explain that? that yeah, that, that, that was <clears throat> one where the, the uh, perfectly good job, at which that homeowner is, is still working. This is actually the, uh, someone who lived in, uh, in, the, in the Carver community. And, and the, the problem was not at all about the job, but about uh, two very sick children. Who, and uh, the, both parents needed to take time away from work, substantial time, to deal with those issues. Uh, and so when things began to stabilize, they were able to, to go back to their jobs, but their bank had stopped working with them in that situation. And so uh, once that happens, you know, lenders maybe should be able to do more for people, but they're, they're subject to a lot of constraints. Uh, and they get into a, to, to dealing with things according uh, to the book. So we, we were able, to, again, to, to work with that, that family. Uh, they were able to pay uh, a mortgage, um, and uh, they are, are, we just closed on that uh, transaction about two months ago. So you work with people in pre-foreclosure and post-foreclosure. Do you want to describe those types of situations? Yeah, the, the pre-foreclosure, as I mentioned, would be a short sale. Right, right. Uh, and uh, the, uh, typically that can take a bit of time while the lender looks at what the value of the property is and makes a decision uh, about it. Uh, the, they tend to want a little bit more um, for the property at that point. They're still optimistic about uh, the, the market. Um, and th then the, the, after the foreclosure, we're working with the uh, REO department, as it's called at the mm -hmm. bank, uh, be, and real, <coughs> banks are not allowed to hold property uh, that they are not using in their business, so they have to move that property on in the world, and uh, so that can be uh, an advantage. 
the, the pressure, there's a lot of uncertainty for homeowners, so doing it on the short sale side may be, may be worth the, the, little, the little bit of extra that you might have to pay for to get the house back, but um, it's uh, the REO situation. Uh, you're, you're racing the clock to when the lender wants to evict. So as you say, early, earlier, sooner is always better. But the, the important thing about your program is in the short sale situation, the intent is that you are, are the purchaser of the short sale yes. and, and the title goes back to the homeowner. That's right. Yeah. Then we sign a purchase and sale agreement with the homeowner at the, at the front end of the process in which uh, we agree to buy it from them, at a, and then we'll, that's the, what the lender has to approve as the short sale. We simultaneously sign an agreement that we're selling it back to them. The last thing we want to do is ever own any of these properties. Our sole goal is to get it back to the homeowner. Uh, and that's a, that's a thank you for, for bringing up that point. And, 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 you, and the people ultimately get a mortgage they can afford. They, they maintain their ownership in the home. The disruption to the family, uh, in many cases, wouldn't even be known uh, to the children in those situations. Yeah, it, that's that's correct. It 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 can work that way. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think the the when people are trying to imagine who whether they they could possibly qualify, what they should be thinking about is, as we said, that they um, have besides being behind on their mortgage, um, do have a, a stable income that's that uh, they feel is is going to allow them to go forward with a mortgage and that they're able to to be setting aside what they think they would be paying for for a housing cost. We do get folks who come to us who haven't been been paying a mortgage and also haven't saved any money and and those that's a that's a difficult situation because it, 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 they'd be looking at suddenly going from not paying to paying a mortgage of say $1200 a month and if they're not used to doing that it, I think that's going to be quite a shock for them. So we have brochures at the registry, uh, all of our offices about your program that actually gives d different examples and a chart as to how it works. Uh, do you want to give your contact information out once yeah, more? And, and, yes, and, and in addition to the phone number, which is 617-933-5880, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, you can also go online uh, to Sun Home Help. Dot org and we're dot org because we're a nonprofit. Uh, so Sun is stabilizing urban neighborhoods. Sunhomehelp.org and there's a lot of information on the web, articles about uh, other people who've done this, uh, been able to succeed at this program with us, um, and uh, inf more information about how the program works. So hopefully people will call and we will learn, uh, be able to to give them information and uh, we'll be useful. Right. Well, thank you for sharing this information with the people of Plymouth County. And our uh, next segment we'll be going into is about some of our notable land records, a little lighter uh, nature than foreclosure issues. But I uh, know that uh, in Brockton and other communities that I've talked to people that you've been working in, you've had great success in helping people maintain their title of their home. And that's what we're all trying to do. Well, so John, thank you, thank you very us. much. Great. Really enjoyed it. Great. Welcome back to the Registry's Report. Again, my name is John Buckley. I'm the Registry of Deeds of Plymouth County. I want to thank Rachel Dorr for a great description as to what the Sun Initiative of Boston Community Capital is all about. If you know anyone that is uh, facing foreclosure, uh, certainly they ought to talk to a federal housing counselor, uh, Neighborhood Housing of the South Shore is based in Brockton. I know the Plymouth Redevelopment Authority in South Shore Housing offers help in that regard. And I uh, think that the Sun Initiative, uh, as described by Rachel, is a great opportunity uh, to uh, take a look at and see if that's the way you want to go. This, this segment, segment three, is a little uh, lighter in nature. We talk about some of our no notable land records. And we are talking about uh, the th 
Thanksgiving holiday as this is uh, the month of November and there's certainly a lot going on uh, all over the place about Thanksgiving. I'm gonna ask, uh, an image will be coming up of the John Alden property in Duxbury. Many people will remember John Alden from their school days. They had to uh, recite the courtship of Miles Standish. Uh, John Alden uh, came over on the Mayflower. He was the cooper on the Mayflower. He was responsible for the beer. And uh, I, I have to say that uh, there's a brewery in Plymouth, Mayflower Brewery, and the uh, owner of that uh, is a relative of John Alden. I think that's a great uh, story that the Mayflower Brewery uh, had a relation to the, the Cooper, the watcher of the beer on the Mayflower ship. But John Alden, at age 20, uh, came over aboard the Mayflower, and he chose to stay in, in Pl the Plymouth colony rather than return to England. He had fallen in love with a young woman by the name of Priscilla Mullins, and uh, uh, th although Miles Standish, the militia leader of the colony, had sought her hand in marriage and had asked John Alden to ask her for uh, Miles Standish's hand in marriage, Priscilla Alden had turned to John Alden and say, why not you, John? They were married. And this deed is when they, uh, le they moved to Duxbury from the original colony. They were given 100 acres over in the town of Duxbury. There is a site in Duxbury that people can visit, the Alden House, and uh, it was built in 1653, and the uh, Alden, Alden Kindred Society of America maintained that site. It's a great place uh, to visit. Uh, this uh, November, we're also recognizing the 50th anniversary of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Uh, Plymouth County has had a lot of uh, Kennedy connections over the years. His grandfather, John Fitzgerald, uh, was mayor of Boston, had a summer home. Uh, he uh, it was on the Antasket Ave in Hull, and uh, President uh, Kennedy's grandfather, John Fitzgerald, had been mayor of Boston, part of the Common Council in Boston, and certainly his uh, legacy as a mayor helped President Kennedy get elected to Congress when he first ran for Congress. Uh, we also have a... Uh, a uh, con contribution from our plaque and statute survey in Plymouth County. It is a uh, image of the Massasoit statute standing high above uh, Plymouth Rock. Uh, a lot of people remember uh, in the month of, th of Thanksgiving, month of November, uh, the tremendous contributions that the Wampanoags did in helping out uh, the colonists as they arrived. Half of them had died the first winter and the Wampanoag people at the time had a great relationship uh, with the, the colonists in a mutual uh, defense pact. So they worked with each other and certainly Wampanoag uh, had a great relationship with the Pilgrim. Many years later, his son, King Philip, uh, turned uh, on that relationship, resulting in the King Philip War, resulting in many deaths across uh, Plymouth County. Uh, I wanna thank uh, my guest, Rachel Dorr today, I want to thank Carol McGilvery for helping me out with the show and David Antoine. This show is really about real estate, letting you know what's going on in uh, the Plymouth County real estate community and trying to get you some educational information. Today we talked about some foreclosure prevention efforts and this show allows me to tell our story and get the information out to the people of Plymouth County. So thank you very much for watching the show and we'll see you next month.